In 2008, a dog in Paris made history when he became the first of his kind to stand witness in a murder trial. The dog, named Scooby, yes Scooby, was home at the time of his owner's death. Though it appeared to be suicide, the family believed it to be murder, and the dog was called to the witness stand. When the suspect in the case was presented to Scooby, the dog barked furiously. It seemed to remember its owner's killer from an incident that occurred over two years prior. The French court system legitimized what many people already think, that dogs are conscious beings with the ability to not only remember, but also have feelings and understand concepts such as death. Take pet cemeteries, for example. Pet owners believe that their animal friends have souls that will go on to some kind of afterlife. But are animals conscious? And how can we prove it? It might seem to be a stretch to think that animals such as dogs and cats would have such high-level brain functions. But what about animals such as whales, whose large brains have proportionally more surface area than that of a human? Well, a group of divers from California believe they do. When a humpback whale was struck immobile by a bunch of crab traps, these divers worked for hours to cut it three. After freeing the whale, they claim that the whale swam to each diver in turn, looked at each person in the eye, and even nudged each with its nose. They felt as if the whale was trying to thank them for what they did. Is it possible for animals to have human emotions? A recent discovery might prove that the answer is in fact yes. Spindle cells are long, spindle-shaped neurons found in the anterior cingulated cortex and the frontoinsular cortex, the part of the brain responsible for social organization, empathy, intuition, speech, and gut reactions. Scientists attribute these cells as being responsible for giving us the higher intelligence that separates us from other species. Originally, it was assumed that these cells are only found in humans and some primates. However, spindle cells have now been found in other animals, such as whales, dolphins, and elephants. This explains these species' high sociability and the fact that they live in groups and communicate with each other. For example, whales developed complex group hunting strategies and communicate through songs. Do spindle cells, which lend certain species a higher intelligence or greater sense of social and emotional awareness, make certain animals conscious? More specifically, is consciousness only about thinking, feeling, and sensing? The greatest contention between those who believe animals have consciousness and those who do not is that humans have language and other species do not. If one lacks the ability to express what it means or how it feels to be conscious, does that mean one isn't? Can a concept of self exist without language? While many animals have developed abilities to communicate with each other, humans are the only species with a system of symbols and meanings that are not fixed but can be combined and altered to make new ones. This difference separates humans' use of language from being a behavior that is unconscious. Since animals' complex communication methods are merely instinctual or learned, it can be argued that they are not conscious beings. Take the whale story. If whales don't have language, how can the divers claim the whale is thanking them? How do you say thank you in whale? Thank you, sir! Wow, I wish I could speak whale. Perhaps the whale was just disoriented from its ordeal. We can also look back at dogs. You know that guilty look dogs get when you scold them? Is it because they actually feel bad? Or that they are just being submissive? Dog cognition specialist Alexandra Horowitz performed a study in which she found that regardless of whether a dog has done something wrong or not, it will perform guilty behavior when reprimanded. The problem is that humans have a habit of viewing the world through a specific human lens. Instead of appreciating the variety of species and types of minds all around us, we compare all other minds to the way our minds work. This can be problematic because how can we know that there is only one type of consciousness? Essentially, if an animal is not conscious just as a human is conscious, 
Does that render them not conscious? There are many cases in which gorillas and chimps, our closest evolutionary relatives, have been taught to communicate with humans through sign language. But researchers make a point to emphasize that these individuals have been raised and acculturated by humans. They have developed skills and a worldview that their wild counterparts have not. In other words, they have learned human. Just because wild animals such as whales, dolphins, and elephants have spindle cells like humans, that doesn't mean we can label their intelligence as anthropomorphic. In fact, these animals developed these spindle cells earlier in evolution than we did. We may never know the extent to which animals are conscious, just as we will never know what it is like to be a bat.